Hey, and welcome to Criminal Justice in a Nutshell. This is Dr. John Fisher, and today's episode is qualitative research. So you can see behind me, I've changed locations this week. We are filming from the Monaghan Sand Hills State Park in Monaghan, Texas. Hold on a second. There we go. Uh, anyway, uh, sorry about that. As you can see behind me, you can see the sand hills. Um, and today we're going to be discussing qualitative research. And within qualitative research, there are five types of research that is done. The first is the narrative or the biological or biographical uh, research. Uh, this is a study of a single person or a group of people. Um, so, for instance, you think that your grandfather is important and my grandfather is important. He was, uh, both my grandfathers are, were in World War II. Uh, my paternal grandfather was captured in the Battle of the Bulge. My maternal grandfather was captured uh, as part of the Dutch resistance and Dutch underground. Um, I could do a narrative or a biographical report uh, on those guys, on, on either or. And their, their participation and their, their stories about being in World War II. Or my father was in Vietnam. I could sit down and I could talk to my father. And I could discuss their experiences. And I could take his experiences and I could turn it into a journal article. You know, the hopes and dreams of a Vietnam vet. Or the experiences of... Um, a Vietnam vet in the Mekong Delta. Or you can identify or you can work on the experiences of a specific group of people. Uh, the example I'm going to use today is the bathhouses. And some of you might be going, what do you mean the bathhouses? Well, in New Mexico and San Francisco and other places in the country, but primarily uh, in New Mexico. I mean, in San Francisco, California, the homosexual community uh, participates in bathhouses. And these are these houses that you have public bathing and public showers and saunas and hot tubs and, and all this fun stuff. And the homosexuals go there to participate in the bathing culture. But a lot of these bathhouse acquaintances turn into sexual uh, activity. And um, how you would conduct this research is you'd go to the literature review and you'd find out all of the interesting things that you could find out about the, the homosexual culture and the bathhouse culture within San Francisco. Okay? And then you would go talk to, the, to a group of people who participate in the bathhouse culture. Okay? The second type of study that we're going to discuss. The second type or category of qualitative research is the phenomenological study. And I kind of did a pharmacological study. Um, there's a camper coming into the campground here. It's a, actually, it's a class A. The thing is huge. Um, it's a diesel pusher. And the engine was loud. But anyway, um, a phenomenological study, the researcher will start with a specific premise to explain the phenomenon. For example, uh, the... There comes another camper. Anyway, um, it starts with an analysis of the data collected. You don't start with a theory. The theory is developed through the process. For if, if you recall my previous lectures, my dissertation was about the law enforcement perceptions of the right-wing militia. Well, the right-wing militia, and as I was in the field and I was collecting all my data and I was talking to all these sheriffs and, and I was talking to members of the militia and I was going through to try and find out what I could uh, learn about the various um, peoples and individuals. Um, the theory 
and if you look, if you were to go read my dissertation or any of my research projects, my theory was developed based upon the information that I gathered and the data that I gathered. So now all of a sudden I'm focusing on credulous Bayesianism and choice architecture and groupthink and all of those things that we have um, that, I, that I've written about because my data turn, showed that what we know in the literature is not true. Okay? The constitutional militia is not a threat to domestic security, regardless of how many people tell you that they are. They're not. And the law enforcement in Texas agrees with me, and they do not believe that the constitutional militia is a threat to domestic society. Um, the, so the theory becomes the final product. Where before, you know, like in the um, narrative or biographical, there is no theory. Um, it's explaining the events. It's, ex it's, it's a biography. It's explaining somebody's life. And then we learn from that individual's life. Okay. As more information is gathered in the pharmacological study, the theory can be developed and become more detailed and more specific. Okay. The next one is the eth ethnography. An ethnography uses cultural themes and aspects to conduct their study. And I know a few of you are looking into racism and a few of you are looking into uh, researching institutional racism or structural racism um, as it is opposed or as it as it what's the word I'm looking for as it affects the people of color within our community and with our country um, you're wanting to work on something like that this this ethnography um, is a possible venue for you to go in your studies because it uses cultural themes. It relies upon aspects of race and ethnicity uh, in, in their studies. Uh, there's three kinds or three types of ethnographies. Uh, the first is a realistic tale. And this is it's a matter of fact tale. Uh, there's no focus on the process. Uh, you go interview people. Um, and you know, one of the one of the topics that keep coming to mind, it keeps being brought to my forefront is the this idea of DWB you know and there's a whole lot of people that are being harassed by the police department because they're DWB uh, and for those of you that don't know what DWB is it's driving while black uh, you can go interview family members or friends or people that you know that are people of color and take down their matter of fact realistic story or their tale um, and then you can focus on and you can identify you know so and maybe even throw in a little bit of quantitative uh, i spoke with 52 african americans uh, 47 of them talked about being pulled over because they're black and these are their stories or these are the common things that we found within their stories uh, the second is called a confessional tale this focuses primarily on the process of the storytelling and not so much the actual event. Okay, so we make sure that the, the storytelling is done correctly. Okay, the third is the impressionistic tale. It's told from a personal point of view. Um, what's going on here? All of these answer one question. What's going on here? Okay, and it would be interesting uh, because I'm not black. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, sorry, that was rude. Um, for those of you who are African American, uh, people of color, you know, is there a marked identification or division on why cops are pulling people over or if cops are pulling people over based upon uh, their skin color? Are they DWB, driving while black? DWH, driving while Hispanic? DWW, driving while a woman. Um, these are interesting things. And I know one of you had talked specifically about doing a paper on racial profiling. Uh, I think that the ethnography, ethnography would be a great process or a great research method to use um, 
to compile and to complete your research study. I know we're, we're finishing up week three in the research and criminal justice in research and criminal justice class here at Ashford University. The next, the fourth is called grounded theory. The grounded theory focuses on the process itself um, and how the theory is generated. Uh, the actual results of this, of this type of research is not really important, although the conclusions are important, but it's a grounded theory establishes the central results. Um, and if not the central results, the central process. And it makes sure, and it's the importance of grounded theory, is that the process is followed so that the process can be repeated over and over and over again. The grounded theory is the most accepted of the five categories of qualitative research. Um, it's the one that's considered real research. Um, all of these programs that I've talked about today are real research. Uh, it's research and the, the goal of research, and I think I've shared this before, the goal of research is that we increase the knowledge base. As academics, as scholars, it is our job to increase the knowledge base. And that can, whether that increasing that knowledge base is talking to a grandfather about World War II or talking to a grandfather about living in the Jim Crow South um, and their experiences of what life was like um, as a bibliography or a biography um, or the grounded theory. Okay, but it is, it is the most accepted of the five. The last is a case study. And a case studies are primarily focused on a single event or a single case. Most of the case studies are done in avenues of med mental health or medical health. Um, but we did case studies with CPS, with Child Protective Services, and we did case studies in when I worked for probation. And we looked at a case and we focused on this case and we looked at the things that were successful and the things that were not successful in the treatment plans and the supervision plans and the programs that we put together to help this individual become successful. Um, and we focused on that one individual case. Does it increase the learning base? Yes, it does. It increases knowledge because now what we've learned from this case, we can apply to other cases. Okay. So I think I'm at 13 minutes. Uh, well, 12 minutes, 55 seconds, uh, I guess it's time for me to sign off. But these are the, the, the five different categories of qualitative research. Um, I hope, hopefully this, this session, this criminal justice in a nutshell, uh, was helpful and beneficial to you. Um, you can let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you like uh, my criminal justice in a nutshell lectures, please do not hesitate to like and subscribe, uh, pass it on and share it to others. I think that this is information that can be used by more than just my class in the, uh, at Ashford University. So this is Dr. John Fisher. I'm signing off. This has been criminal justice in a nutshell, qualitative research.